ever been told that you walk on water? In general now, I would think someone saying so-and-so walks on water is intended to insult. Like, this guy or gal is so full of herself, she thinks she walks on water. Of course, many people have said that I walk on water. But I do play a god here on YouTube, so make of that what you will. Walking on water is one of the miracles allegedly performed by Jesus. It's a step up from changing water into wine, especially since Jesus made everyone there at the wedding in Cana turn around and then close their eyes. But it's not quite raising Lazarus from the dead, is it? By the way, Lazarus wasn't actually dead. He'd, he'd just had a giant turkey dinner, watched six hours of football, and smoked a fatty filled with some premium indica. He was definitely out, but, but not dead. At least that's what it says in the Gospel of Favish Bar Shimmel. Walking on water is clearly the silliest and stupidest of all the miracles. But let's look at the story, which appears in every Gospel except Luke, in its proper context. John's recounting of the tale is the shortest, for those of you keeping score. So, having fed the 5,000 with just a fish and some loaves, Jesus wanted to hang out near Bethsaida and pray up in the mountains where the smell of all of those people couldn't get to him. He sent the equally smelly disciples ahead by ship on the Sea of Galilee. About the fourth watch of the night between 3 and 6 a.m., the crew was distressed by the waves and a, a contrary wind. Suddenly, they saw someone walking on the water. Initially, they feared it was a ghost because that's... That's just what ghosts do. They, they walk on the water to get some moisture in their ectoplasm. That's, that's just science. Everyone knows that. Jesus then calmed them, saying, Dudes, it's me! At which point, he got into the boat and the winds calmed. In John's Gospel, they then straightaway hit land. In Matthew's Gospel, Peter goes out to join Jesus, loses his faith, sinks, and is rescued by the big J. But I think that was just Matthew dumping on Peter. Those tax collectors could be so mean. Trust me, I've run into a few. This is a silly story because if you can walk on water, you can defy the law of gravity. And no one who can defy the law of gravity walks any significant distance whatsoever. Certainly not 25 to 30 furlongs out to see where the apostles were fighting the waves and the wind. Not Superman, not Wonder Woman, not Magneto, Captain Marvel, Vision, Thor, Storm, Iron Man. None of them. Not even Chris Angel. And how exactly do you walk on water anyway? especially with the waves and the wind vexing the boys. The Sea of Galilee had 10-foot waves in 1992. Did Jesus just run up and down the waves? E even if they're just a couple feet high, was he climbing up one and then kind of down the other side? I, I, were they small enough that he could just step over the waves? Was he riding one of the waves toward the boat like Kelly Slater at Cocoa Beach? That's not really walking on water, is it? Maybe he was able to glide along the water even with the waves, kind of like Gumby and Pokey. Crap, I, I, just, I just dated myself, didn't I? And what does all of that do to your sandals or your, what is it called? Not a, not a burka, but a, a tunic, tunic. Wouldn't he be absolutely soaked after a three to four mile walk on the water? That's how far out they were. I'll bet he won the wet tunic contest that night. Next day, Judas had a t-shirt made that said, Jesus makes me wet. Whatever the case, it's clear that Jesus isn't actually walking on the water. He's defying gravity, which is much more akin to flying. Could, could Jesus be Pine Creek Doug's ancestor? The one who flew over the Grand Canyon? Could they be one and the same? I really think I'm onto something here. Jesus is the Flying Man. Once again, I'm me. Thanks for watching.